Welcome. Today I want to do something I have not done on the channel before and that is just show you my camera collection, my film cameras and my digital cameras as well. And since my channel is mostly focused on film photography at the moment, let's go ahead and start with the film cameras. So the first one over here to my left is going to be the Fuji GA645. Now this is actually a camera that I have not talked about on this channel yet. And that is mainly because uh, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this camera. Some of the pros about this camera are just the 645 uh, format that it has. I've kind of fallen in love with that format just because you get those extra five photos that you wouldn't on a 6x7 uh, camera. But the detail that you're getting is also just amazing compared to a 35 millimeter camera. Now, one of the things that I love about this camera specifically is just the fact that it's a point and shoot medium format camera, which uh, if you have not used before, I would suggest you use it. I use it mostly in my professional work, at least so far. Uh, and some of the best use cases for it are honestly when I'm out shooting a wedding and I wanna get a more detailed portrait of a couple or, or something on the dance floor. It has a built-in flash, it works great. Uh, but one of the biggest cons about this camera is the fact that it is an electronic camera. And I've spoken about this ad nauseum on this channel, so I won't go too far into it, but it's just not super reliable, just to put it bluntly. Now, the next camera we're going to talk about is one that probably everyone wants to hear about, and that is the Leica M6. There's not a whole lot of things that I can say about this camera that have not already been said. Uh, I absolutely love it. Primarily use it for my weddings just as a camera to pick up and just kind of grab moments on the go. Occasionally I'll use it for portraiture, but yeah, it's a fantastic camera. You really can't go wrong with it. And I think the main reason I love it is just because it suits the way that I photograph. And I've been really trying to blend street photography techniques into my wedding photography. And you can see that through these photos on the dance floor, just kind of walking up to people and taking photos as they come to me or just anticipating moments there. I really cannot do that type of photography with any other camera that I have at the moment. And not a whole lot of cons that I can say about it, except that it's mad expensive. And that at this point I've already dealt with. So now I'm just enjoying the pros of it. Now, the other camera is a bit more inconspicuous. It is the Olympus XA, which actually is probably the most underrated camera out of this entire lineup here. Uh, the Olympus XA is a camera that I actually compared to the Contax T2 on my channel uh, a few years ago, and it held up really well against the T2, considering this is like 150 bucks on eBay used. It is made of plastic, the shell, so it's not the sturdiest camera out there. This one actually has a huge crack uh, in the front of it, uh, but it has the lens protected, and the lens itself is just incredible. I mean, some of the images that I've taken with the Olympus XA are some of my favorite 35 millimeter film images that I've ever taken. Uh, and I've taken portraits, I've used it out on the streets. Uh, it's just an all around great camera. And if you're in the market for a budget film camera that you wanna have more control with, this is the one that I would recommend. It is aperture priority, so you set the aperture and are able to control just more of what's going on. And it has a built-in light meter as well, so all your bases are covered for what you'd want in a 35 millimeter camera. The next camera that we're gonna talk about is this Instax 300 Fujifilm Polaroid camera. Now, because this is an Instax wide 300 camera, you're gonna get very, very large prints that come out of it. And I honestly don't wanna to spend too much time on it because I kinda of wanna dedicate a video of its own to Polaroids, but you can see from some of the images that I've taken, it really does everything you need it to. Now with the film cameras all taken care of, let's go ahead and talk about the two digital cameras here. The first one being the Fujifilm X-E4. Now this camera is honestly one of my favorite cameras that I've ever owned. And what really makes it that is the lens that I've put in front of it. Uh, it is an 18 millimeter F2. 18 millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera is about 28 millimeters. And that's really why I fall in love with this camera is just that uh, 28 millimeter perspective. And then you throw in all of the different film emulations that come with this camera. It is just something that I use pretty much for everything. And then the last camera that we're gonna talk about is the Sony a7 IV. 
Uh, I also have a Sony a7S III that's filming right now, but I think this kind of represents both of the cameras well. And this is the camera that I pretty much use to photograph and film everything that I do. And I'm honestly not gonna explain a whole lot about them because there are tons of videos that currently explain all the specs. I just wanna tell you why I love it so much. And it's really just the reliability of the Sony cameras, the color profiles, the fact that it is dual native ISO, at least on the Sony a7S III. I mean, you can shoot in the dark with these cameras and be completely fine, have usable images. Uh, I moved away from Canon a couple years ago and I have never looked back. These are perfect, the form factors are great. They're not overbearing like I found a lot of Canon cameras are. It just fit my particular workflow, it fit my style of shooting as well. And I could not be more happy with the a7IV and the a7S III being my workhorses for photo and video. At the end of the day, having these cameras is really just about understanding that they're tools. And with that comes experimentation, comes buying and selling, and just coming to a place where you feel comfortable using these types of tools in any situation. And I can say confidently, with the cameras that I have in front of me, that that is the case. I think the main point of a video like this I want you to walk away from is that, first off, you don't need to have all this to be a working photographer. Uh, I've just gone to a point where I think each of these fits a certain role and having them helps me make the best work that I can. Uh, the first camera I ever owned was a T6i and I used that for like three years before I got a more professional DSLR. Again, all that to say, you can make great work now with pretty much everything out there. But I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was a little informative into how I use these cameras, the types of images that I'm able to take with these cameras. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.